Here we are. This is Jeff DeFerro reporting in. This video, we're going to do one about Vietnam veteran, my Uncle Frank. There's my Uncle Frank. Who? Cool. My Uncle Frank lived with my, uh, he married my Aunt Connie back in 1960. And uh, where he was somewhat of a young man, always in trouble, always drinking, always, you know, Always in trouble. I mean, this guy is always in trouble. He's just a wild man when he drinks. And he's half Apache and French. And my Aunt Connie was half Chippewa and German. Wow, what a combination. And at that time, my Uncle Frank just had my uh, cousin Ronnie. Um, but their marriage was, was pretty crappy. Uh, my Uncle Frank and my Aunt Connie's marriage is pretty crappy. Here's Aunt Connie. Now, this photograph was taken right around 2015 or 16. This is many, 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 many years later. My Uncle Frank, uh, he didn't get drafted into the Vietnam War, but my Uncle Frank, uh, he's like, you know what? You know, he was constantly fighting with my aunt and often threatened to leave her. She often threatened to leave him. Because they both drank and they got both volatile personalities. Till eventually he just says, you know what? He says uh, one afternoon, back in late 1966, about three years after I was born, because me and my mom lived next door to him, that uh, he decided to um, volunteer for the Marines and go to Vietnam. Just to get away from my aunt, just to get away from Connie. Just to get away from her. He just couldn't stand her. So she says, fine, go ahead. Go to Vietnam and get killed, you fucking piece of crap. You know, and at this time he had um, my cousin Sonny and then my cousin Luana all back to back to back. So, and uh, the job that he had, he was just simply not making a lot of money. And plus, you know, with his drinking problem. But the Marines did not know that when he signed on the dotted line and gets sworn in. My Uncle Frank left all his insurance to all three of his kids. They sent them off to um, San Diego, down to Camp Pendleton, where he did his boot camp. He became an infantryman, trained up as an infantryman. And he got sent to Vietnam in December, no, January 1967. He was stationed with the 4th, he was with the 4th Marine Station in Dong Ha. He says somewhere right below the DMZ somewhere. And within the first two weeks of being in country, my friend Uncle Frank was already in trouble. He got in trouble for drinking and fighting. Uh, he was being the new guy, one of the bunch of new guys amongst a dra bunch of draftees. He was a volunteer. So, my Uncle Frank often got into trouble while he was in Vietnam. But he did uh, uh, participate in Operation Hickory, Kingfisher, and Operation K Kentucky. That's what he told me. Oftentimes, he'd go out to the field drunk or high. He found it, he goes, hell, Vietnam was like a god dang, uh, goddamn vacation. I mean... You know, he didn't go out to the field much. He didn't want to. He wanted to hang back and drink and uh, go and mess around with the hookers. But, you know, he got sent to the field to participate. He often did ambushes, lawn patrols. And my Uncle Frank was wounded for the first time roughly about two months after he got into country. He got some shrapnel up on his uh, behind his left leg. Uh, he spent uh, roughly about a week in the, in the hospital, which his wounds were not that bad. They bandaged him up. They awarded him a Purple Heart. They sent him back to his unit for light duty for the next two weeks. And then right back out on patrol again, where he was, of course, drinking, smoking, and getting into trouble. My Uncle Frank never made it past the rank of E2. He was always getting busted down to E1. Every, a lot of his guys liked him. Because he was cool, but a lot of people also hated him because when he got drunk, he was a miserable fucking drunk. Now, I am not painting an overall bad picture on our Vietnam veterans, which I am not doing. 
I am not going to do this. But my Uncle Frank was not a very good soldier slash Marine. My dad, my Uncle Frank had no discipline whatsoever. So, towards the end of his tour, you know, um, he used to write letters to Aunt Connie. She used to write letters back threatening him with divorce. He told her to go to hell. Many times she told him to go to hell. He no longer wrote her. So, at the end of his tour, after his year tour, he writes to her and says, Hey, you know what? I'm on my way home. She goes, You know what? Why don't you just stay in Vietnam, you piece of shit? You make better money, you know, because most of the money was going to her. So, you know what? She says, And when you get back, I'm divorcing you anyway, so I don't care. So, he's like, You know what? Go to hell, you bitch. I'm staying in Vietnam. Screw that bullshit. I'm not going to go home and listen to her and have her bitch at me every day of the week. So he stays in Vietnam, and he continued to get into trouble. He started spending time in the little stockade there, for just being a fucking drunk and an asshole. So um, during Operation Kentucky and some of the other patrols afterwards, he was wounded two more times with shrapnel from exploding hand grenades and mortar fire. Nothing serious to send him home. He even did uh, some acts of bravery while he was out there. He actually went out there and saved his platoon leader, which a lot of the, a lot of the guys, uh, a lot of his guys, he told me, he says they like this platoon leader. He's a brand new guy, but the new guy used to be an E5 in the Marines before he be, decided, you know, became an officer because he finished his college. So he understood the men. And he understood them as an enlisted man, as an NCO. So a lot of his guys really liked him. And my Uncle Frank went out there to uh, drag him back while he was under fire after he'd been wounded in the legs. So my Uncle Frank says, you know what, I'm just so sick of this, blah, blah, blah. And they said, we just couldn't keep this guy out of trouble. So after at the end of his second tour, they sent him back to the United States, where he, um, they stationed him for his last year and a half. In a in in Camp Pendleton, um, he didn't hold rank very long while he was there. He within the first three or four days he got busted drinking, and then when he just did regular duties for his time, you know, his uh, my aunt Connie lived only a few miles off the base. Frank got into trouble again. They were fighting all the time, domestic violence. So it's greatly frowned upon, and actually, my Aunt Connie does all the punching and all the kicking, and Uncle Frank does, you know, he runs out the damn door all the time, because my Aunt Connie has a tendency to throw very heavy stuff at people. And unfortunately, for the ex-Fourth Marine, Marine, Vietnam veteran, my Uncle Frank finally got into serious trouble, where he punched a, a gunnery sergeant then got into a brawl with a bunch of MPs to break up the fight. He was already drinking at the time. And my Uncle Frank basically got into serious trouble when he struck his lawyer, who was a JAG officer. My Uncle Frank, unfortunately, ends up going to Levensworth for 13 months. Hard labor. So my Uncle Frank will lose all his VA benefits when he got out, and he received an undesirable discharge. They don't do those no more. So my Uncle Frank, uh, after he got out, his terms of duty was up. He didn't give a shit. He got into construction as a laborman until eventually he worked his way up to foreman and to site foreman back in the mid-80s before he retired. Uh, sometime in the 90s, after he relayed all this information to me about his Vietnam experience and his Vietnam service. My Uncle Frank, I said, you know what, we're going to see if we can get your uh, discharge upgraded to bad conduct or maybe eventually become a general discharge where you can give VA, VA, VA benefits. He didn't care. He told me, I don't give a crap. I says, Uncle Frank, Jesus, come on, man. You got friggin' three purple hearts. You got a bronze star for valor. You got a Navy Marine Commendation Medal, Combat Action Ribbon, what's going on? I said, dude, you're a freaking hero, a minor hero, but you're a hero no less. He says, yeah, I just does. He says he doesn't care. So, unfortunately for my Uncle Frank, who now is suffering from different kinds of cancer, 
I'm still trying to figure out how I can get him to change his mind for he can get the burial he deserves when his time goes. In a national cemetery, the guy holds a bronze star for valor. He owns three purple hearts. But my Uncle Frank says, nah. So after my Aunt Connie died, he lost both his sons and his daughter. He's the last one alive on that side of his family. Uncle Frank now is in his 80s, uh, I think 80 years old. He lives with two black hookers somewhere in Barstow. Last time I talked to him was last year. He does not like talking to buddy, anybody. So this is Jeff DeFerro talking about my wild man, Uncle Frank, Vietnam veteran. This is Jeff DeFerro going, huh, huh?